Hello and welcome to Nanum. My name's John and this is Daniel. We're from Nanum. And here I've got Oleg, who's from Lock and Key Remedies as their director of education, and Asher over here, who's with the University of Saskatchewan. And we're just going to be talking about cannabinoids and COVID, and looking at some of the ways these uh, molecules interact with the spike protein of COVID-19. Daniel, can you give us an overview of the structure here that we're looking at? Sure. So here we have the spike protein of the coronavirus in yellow and green, but in yellow is what we call the receptor binding domain. And in blue, we see the ACE2 receptor from a human, right? So this is what the virus uses to latch on our cells and infect us. So this is just um, the interface of both of them. And now we are going to show these molecules that this new study uh, shown to be potentially a, a treatment for, for this disease. So we have CBDA, THCA, and CBGA over here. So what all these compounds have in common is that they're all the acid form of a lot of naturally occurring cannabinoids in the cannabis indica or sativa plant. And what makes them an acid is this carboxylic acid group right here. Mm. The COO minus over here, oh, over here, and then in the last one it would be over here. Yeah. And normally what happens is when these compounds are combusted under heat, as in if you were to make a cannabis edible or smoke uh, the cannabis plant, these will become decarboxylated um, mm. and they won't exist in this form when you smoke cannabis or use it uh, as an edible. Well, that must really change the you know, solubility and like the different properties of it. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. But... Mm. Um, yeah, I think those are the key points of all the compounds. They're all the acid form of naturally occurring cannabinoids mm. uh, that occur in the cannabis on, plant. On Oleg, you, you mentioned that this is something that's been studied somewhat already of trying to understand how these cannabinoids have, can maybe affect COVID-19. Can you tell us a little Absolutely. bit of the background on things that's been done? Sure. Uh, so uh, last year, and uh, well, actually now it's uh, two years ago because COVID's been around for so long. But in in uh, 2020, <laughs> there there uh, were several researches done. Uh, one, uh, I think the one of the most important ones was at University of Leth Lethbridge in Alberta, Canada, uh, and uh, they they found that CBD, uh, the uh, not in the not in the acidic form, but in CBD form, um, that it. Uh, it, it plays a role in downregulating the uh, the expression in the uh, ACE2 receptor that uh, you know we have here. So you know there, and that, that research was conducted back in May of uh, 2020, um, and then there were a few follow up researches that that uh, you know further confirmed that and uh, you know that aspect as far as helping the uh, avoiding uh, uh, COVID. Uh, but then there was. There there was also uh, a several researches done on the anti-inflammatory properties of, of mm -hmm. CBD uh, as as it helps uh, you know prevent uh, the uh, uh, cytokine storm or uh, you guys could probably pronounce sure. it better than I can, uh, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. cytokine storm exactly so the uh, it, it basically helps uh, pre, you know uh, the lower the inflammation and that was the one of the main reasons why people ended up in hospital for, uh, for you know with with uh, lungs uh, you know having lung conditions because of the uh, extra inflammation that they were having so those were the research that were done last year yeah oh, okay. in this case it's completely different um, approach right here because correct here what this study shows is not about reducing the inflammation but actually just literally blocking the entry of the virus in our mm. own cells right uh, here in Incredible. the interface. So yeah, let's um, let's explore a little further. I'm going to get rid of the surface here on this complex, so we can actually see what's going on behind. There you go, mm. boom. So again, oh, keep in mind, in yellow is the spike protein of the coronavirus, and so what we've done here is we've docked 
in Nanum, these two compounds that we were talking before, the CBGA and CBDA that were found to bind here. And just by binding, they're, they're supposed to disrupt the interaction between the virus and the human cell, thereby preventing infection. I mean, one thing to really emphasize, too, is that this was more than... Uh, well, we do have this docking study here, which is really interesting. Uh, in the actual paper itself, they did do... Uh, a good amount of research and looking at the affinity of these actually binding and showing that it not only reduced the association of these proteins, but it even lowered, you know, the rate of infectivity using one of their models. And so you get like, you know, not just this really cool picture that suggests that they have the real data, the real biological output to really suggest um, some changes to this. And we can definitely explore how this is affecting the pocket. Right. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, calculate the chemical interactions between these two drugs right. and the spike protein. Oh, good idea. Right? So let's open. And the the affinity was like pretty high. It was like in the nanomole range uh, for, oh, the, yeah. um, for the binding sites. It was pretty impressive. Nice. Well, and it was based off of a displacement assay too, yeah. which is really important to notice Dialysis. that this isn't just saying that it's going to go in and bind closely, but maybe it won't be able to compete. Well, that's a direct competition assay. And that's a really, really encouraging um, sort of look at how this might actually look in a real infection. But yeah, wow. let's, let's focus. We can already see here at the orthosteric site that Daniel was mentioning earlier, this is directly overlapping with right where this, you know, cyan, teal, you know, the ACE2 is supposed to associate as Daniel described, the orthosteric site. So this is um, it's a really fascinating look at how these are interacting. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see the, the electrostatic interactions that are mapped out here that can help suggest what's making this such a high affinity uh, mm. connection here. Right. I've just triggered the chemical interactions plugin, so we should be seeing soon probably, probably hydrogen yeah. bonds, probably stacking interactions as well. This probably has a nice hydrogen bonding here yeah. to help tie this in. So this is a, a pretty interesting surface of where the backbone appears to be more accessible than some of the R groups. And oh yeah, now we've got right. the pi pi interaction that's clearly mapped uh, here yeah. at the top. Like here Daniel in magenta, that's right. Some hydrogen bondings mm -hmm. here are also expected in, in cyan with this asparagine and this ah, and the carboxylic here. carboxylic acid yeah which is which is interesting mm. that's good that they, that's i think that supports su sort of like if you ripped away the carboxylic acid the affinity of a lot of those cannabinoids I that see. are decarboxylated would have lower affinity yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. this binding site maybe but well, um makes a lot hypothesis, of sense right yeah, it's, it's really interesting yet. how much you get to discover the, the, these, you know, like the, you're thinking out loud, basically, just by seeing, you know, this, mm -hmm. you know, in such a way. So, yeah, it's, it's, you know, thank, thanks to, the, to this program, because, uh, you know, how, how many, uh, you know, scientists are able to see it like this, you know, to, to be able to connect the dots and see, you know, what, how it actually physically works. Yeah, oh, I don't. Sure. I don't see a lot of this. I miss a lot of this stuff when I'm just using my my computer and my Astro, like you know, doing it on the computer. Here you get all, all the angles you wish. Yeah, I miss a lot of <laughs> stuff when I'm <laughs> looking at it. In the computer screen. Yeah, virtual reality is definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. And so we are watching here the CBDA doc. Then I'm going to switch mm. to the CBGA now. I'm going to show it real quick. So we have both. Mm, hide the other one. Yeah, this one's CBGA. Wow. We don't see this here a, many This is such a different fit, but it's so much longer. Look at how it's just fitting into the crevice of this. Something that yeah. sometimes right. is misleading about some molecules is having the surface area coverage can really provide just enough contacts, even if they aren't individually incredibly potent. Just, yeah, look at that nice fit into the yeah. curve there. Oh, that's, yep. that's right. pretty. It's it awesome. Yeah. I'm almost thinking now if you like if you engineer a molecule that can with a lot of like aromatic rings you can make it a pretty high affinity like and just because of the tyrosine oh, yeah. the two tyrosines the phenylalanine that's kind of what my mind's going on right now we can make <laughs> an interesting inhibitor of this with a lot of aromatic residues Whoa, on our I ligands. I mean, you just have to add in, yeah, a few hydroxyls or something else to manage yeah. the solubility. But I, yeah. I mean, clearly, that aromatic, you know, core of each of these compounds is important mm. to 
And if we look down at the Alisteric, we can even see it lining yeah. up a bit with the Tryptophan 436. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. I, I want mean, to show the surface here. Mm. Yeah, let's take a look at this surface for a second. Mm. Yeah. We oh, see wow. how it fits here in this yeah. orthostatic pocket. Yeah, jump over here, Oleg. Yeah, take a look at this with us. Yeah, come over to one of these. Yeah, look at that. Oh, nice. See, this wow. just looks so shallow when I don't look at it with the surface, to be honest. Like, it just doesn't look <laughs> like a real, a real pocket, you know? But this gives you a bit more of a, a good feeling of how much space this really is covering. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible, incredible yeah. It's still to be determined how exactly would this compound binding in this area make an impact right, yeah. up here in the interface between mm. the virus and the human point. receptor, right? Yeah, because this I, one's I, I clearly you, you, in, interfering, but this one's a bit more tricky. But maybe a conformational change, like you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, usually, Asha. I mean, usually with these things, they're allosteric sites, right? So they bind to some site not, that's not the orthosteric site. And by doing so, mm. they modulate the shape of binds here. The shape of this site gets modulated in such a way that reduces the interaction sure. between this S1 uh, region and the uh, angiotensin um, ACE2 mm. receptor. So it's interesting. It's uh, You'd have to almost look at like the uh, molecular dynamics of how that all happens to figure it out. But mm. it's interesting how <laughs> right. well it does it at the, uh, the, the allosteric site. Like it's a pretty strong inhibitor and it binds to the allosteric site. It's a much change the shape in a really drastic way. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, fascinating. Just so our audience knows, we, we did the molecular docking using autodoxamina here within Nanom and also calculated the chemical interactions within Nanom as well. Mm. And uh, yeah, we got um, free energy values that were actually very similar to those from the publication. Not exactly the same, but that makes sense because, you know, we were just different experiments and they might have done something else, but very similar anyway. A uh, value of about minus six kilo, uh, kilocalories, kilocalories right, per, per mole. mole. Yeah. 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 Mm. Which is not very strong value, but... It's not, but they, in the paper they run these experiments, That's that right. dialysis experiment really showed that it does yeah. um, inhibit the S1 um S1 region, the spike protein from binding to the angiotensin receptor. So, right. They use yeah. a you pseudovirus that, right? and then an actual mm -hmm. uh, live virus, right? Both of them. Yeah. Well, I think they as you mentioned, they Asher, uh... Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. Yeah. They were talking about how they, I think they incubated the virus with 25, 25 nano, I think 25 mil, uh, what was the 20, 25 micrograms of the CBD compounds. Anybody have the paper? Could be. Yeah, we have the paper over here, by the way. This is the publication yeah, yeah. we're talking about, which, by the way, uh, the title is Cannabinoids Block Cellular Entry of SARS CoV 2 and the Emerging Variants. But I want to challenge this because it, they only really mm. tested the uh, variant alpha and beta. So mm. there's no mm -hmm. really, there's no data on, on Delta or Omicron or others. Omicron. Yeah. So, you know, mm. I guess, I guess That's a um, good point. It's, it's to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but it worked well with the, with the alpha yeah. and beta, it worked. It was equally yeah. effective. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, they did this experimental uh, experiments with um, uh, magnetic beads, right? Where they isolated yeah. Yeah, spike protein and then they washed down the other non ligands. And um, yeah, they got peaks here. This <laughs> is with a peptide, actually. Mm. Uh, a peptide that mimics the sequence of the, the human receptor. So it would bind perfectly. And then, yeah, and then this cannabinoids would bind also especially CBGA. And uh, yeah, here we have their their figure with the, their dockings. And again, it's pretty much very similar to what we got here in, in Nanum. Yeah, here, by the way, we have some blue, beautiful nuclei of cells. Yeah. And, um, you know, in red here is some of the antibodies that are binding specifically RNA from the virus. So we see a lot of red in the control, but almost no red in the CBD and CBGA. 
So that's supposedly indicating that there's no viral replication when these two cannabinoids are applied. There's hardly any viral replication. Mm. Um, yeah, and then here we have the different strains. Well, in blue we have the, I believe it's a wild type from Wuhan, right? In blue, and then we have in orange the, the um, alpha variant, and in green the beta variant. Hmm. And they both get um, neutralized pretty quickly when these compounds are added to the to the mix, right? So it's very interesting, yeah. There is 25 micrograms. That's the unit I was looking right. for. Right. Yeah, micrograms per milliliter. Okay. That's right. You can actually go ahead and highlight that. Whoops. Well, now <laughs> it's still <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me, let yeah, me repeat yeah. that. And I'd, can, I'd love, to, I'd love actually... to chip in. Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd love to chip that. in some some context uh, about uh, these cannabinoids. So uh, both CBDA and CBGA are uh, relatively abundant uh, already, and uh, they they they, uh, uh, they could be a lot more abundant. And the reason for that is you know because hemp is now legal in the United States and uh, mm -hmm. in most places around the world, thankfully. Um, so it, you know it gives the option, at least here in the United States, for for people to grow their own hemp and then. Then uh, you know, harvest it, and then they could you know add mm -hmm. it to their salads. They could add it to uh, their their uh, uh, you know milkshakes, smoothies, whatever whatever the, uh, <laughs> they make it, or, or just eat it raw. I mean, uh, I, I you know I enjoy eating uh, cannabis plants raw at times, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it, you know it's something that could be incorporated into a person's diet, um, and it's very cost effective. So uh, you know these 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 are very accessible solutions, uh, and uh, will be even more so in. The, in the future thank you so much for watching uh, if you're interested in hearing more about COVID-19 and about the spike proteins feel free to look at some of our other videos here on YouTube where we talk with a number of scientists on what's going on with COVID all right hope to see you in VR thank you everyone take care